Mubarak, the great early Muslim scholar, mentions a story in one of his books about an old, wise Muslim man. That Muslim man was on his deathbed. And while he was on his deathbed, the people around him said to themselves, let's ask him something. Maybe he has some great advice to give us like he used to give us throughout his entire life. So they went to him and they said to him, give us some advice. And he said to them two words, two words, my dear brothers and sisters, that are the basis of today's reminder. He said to them, أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ سَوْفَ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ سَوْفَ He said to them, I warn you against sofa. I warn you against sofa. So what is sofa? Is that maybe you know another name for the shaitan? Or maybe it was a serial killer that was living with them at the time that he was warning the people against. Actually, it's none of these things. Sofa is the Arabic word for the word, I will. What do you mean, I will? You know, when you know that you're doing something wrong and you're disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you say to yourself, I want to repent to Allah. But then you say to yourself again, I will repent, but not now, tomorrow. After I finish doing this sin one more time, I will repent. I will repent next week. SubhanAllah. This is one of the best ways that shaitan uses with us. Procrastination, my dear brothers and sisters. That's what we're talking about here today. Shaitan keeps on telling us, you will repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will go closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not now though. Just a little bit later. And then we fall into the trap of shaitan. And you know that this trap of the shaitan works mostly with good people, not with bad people. You know with bad people, shaitan doesn't tell them, you know, you will repent later. He just tells them, go ahead. Go ahead and disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Go ahead and do that sin. But with good people like you, shaitan actually comes to them and he tells them, you will repent. You will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But not now though. Just a little bit later. Just a little bit later. See, sister, you will start wearing your hijab. But not now though. Right after graduation or right after you get married, you will stop wearing hijab. Brother, you will stop you know, dealing in riba because you know that it's haram, but not now though. After you have a million dollars in your bank account, then inshallah, you're going to stop dealing in riba. When are you going to go to hajj? Oh, I will. Uh, you know, when I'm 50 or, or 55. Actually, I'm going to go next year. I will go next year. And then that next year becomes next year and next year and next year until you reach a point where you don't know. Maybe you will live until that next year or maybe you won't. You know why shaitan uses this trick of procrastination with us? Because if you fall into this trap, eventually one of two things will happen. Either you will die before you repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or even worse, you'll continue living. But that sin that you're doing will become such a part of your life that you won't be able to give it up. It'll just become a regular part of who you are and you will keep telling yourself, I can't, I can't give it up. And the reason that happened is because we procrastinated. We didn't make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right after we sinned. See, all of us sin. That's a fact of life. As the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كُلُّ بْنِ آدَمُ خَطَّاءُ وَخَيْرُ الْخَطَّائِينَ التَّوَّابُونَ All son of Adam are sinners. But the best of those wrongdoers and the best of those sinners are those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about tawbah in the Quran, he says, إِنَّمَا التَّوْبَةُ عَلَى اللَّهِ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السُّوءَ بِجَهَالَةً ثُمَّ يَتُوبُونَ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ أُولَٰئِكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, tawbah that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for those who do bad deeds out of ignorance. And out of ignorance doesn't mean that they don't know that this is haram what they're doing. But out of ignorance means that at the moment that they were doing this sin, they were in ignorance of the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their repentance if they repent right away. Those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept their repentance. Then the next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيِّئَاتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدَهُمُ الْمَوْتُ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ وَلَلَّذِينَ يَمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارٌ And tawbah 
is not for those who continue doing sins and sins and sins and many bad deeds until they're about to die. And then they say, I repent now. Or those who die in a state of disbelief, those who die as kuffar. So my dear brother and my dear sister who's watching, go ahead and take that step, don't procrastinate. If you're far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you're doing a specific sin, make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and repent from it right now. Because you keep on telling yourself, I will repent tomorrow, I will, I will, I will, I will repent tomorrow, next week. And they may never be a tomorrow for you. And they may never be a next week. Remember that. See, in order to prove this point a little bit more, I'll tell you a hadith that not a lot of people know. This is a hadith that has been corrected by Sheikh Al-Albani. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu says that when a Muslim sinner commits a sin against Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, the angel on the left will not write that sin down for six hours. If the believing Muslim repents to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala during these six hours, then the angel will not write it. But if he doesn't, then the angel will write it as one sin, one bad deed. SubhanAllah. This hadith is teaching us not to procrastinate. If we sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then repent right away and make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept your tawbah bi'idhnillah. In order to, for us to avoid being procrastinators, because this is something that we all do, we all avoid procrastination. So I kept on thinking of different ways that we can uh, you know, implement in order for us to avoid procrastination. So I came up with three things. Three things, my dear brothers and sisters, if we do them, then inshallah we'll avoid being procrastinators. The first thing is to always create a sense of urgency for yourself by remembering death often. Death can come to you at any moment, at any age. Doesn't matter if you're young, doesn't matter if you're old, doesn't matter if you're healthy, doesn't matter if you're sick. Death will come to you at any moment. It can come to you even while you're committing a sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second thing that we can do in order to avoid procrastination is not only pray on time, but try to always pray as soon as possible after the adhan comes in. And when you do that, then what happens is that as a Muslim, you keep on doing that five times a day and you continue doing it for a week, then you'll create this sense inside of yourself, this cycle that I'm a person who doesn't procrastinate. I'm a person who does things right when they need to be done. Pray not only on time, but try to pray as soon as possible after the adhan comes in. And the third and last thing that you can do in order to avoid procrastination is something that we learned in management called the five minute rule. And the five minute rule basically says that if you have a task that you need to accomplish and you can't do it all at once, then at least try to do five minutes of it. I'll give you an example from something you know that uh, happens to all of us and then try to apply it to your life. For example, you want to memorize the Quran and you know this the Quran is, is really huge and I can't memorize all of these things. Instead of trying to memorize, you know, 10 pages a day, just tell yourself, I'll memorize whatever I can for five minutes. Maybe it could be one ayah. Maybe it could be two ayahs. Maybe it'll be 10 ayahs. But at least you're making progress. And once you do that, then one of two things will happen. The first thing is you could, you know, get this energy inside of you where you just tell yourself, okay, you know, I've memorized, alhamdulillah, these two or three ayahs. Now I will continue and I have this energy that came to me and I want to continue and I want to memorize more ayahs. And if that doesn't happen, then the second thing, which is not, a, not bad, that at least you've memorized a few ayahs of the Qur'an instead of putting it off. Instead of telling yourself, oh, I will do it tomorrow. I will start memorizing the Qur'an tomorrow. I will do this tomorrow. Try and do it right now. Do at least five minutes. If you can't do the whole thing, then do five minutes, inshallah. At the end, I want to remind myself and remind you of the story that we started with in the beginning about the old Muslim man when he said, أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ سَوْفَ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ سَوْفَ I warn you against sawfa. I warn you against procrastination. I'll see you next time, inshaAllah. Jazakum Allah khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.